Hello, welcome to Accentra CNA training video with a focus on fall prevention, body mechanics, back protection, range of motion, and home exercise. So some of the things we're going to talk about, that's divided into three parts. First one is going to be body mechanics and back care. The second part will be just a review of bathroom equipment and some, some transfers. And the third will be divided into some passive range of motion exercises uh, that will be caregiver assisted. Uh, firstly will be upper extremity and then we'll go through lower extremity. So part one is going to be on body mechanics and back care uh, with a focus on preventing uh, caregiver injury or your injury while you're on the job. So firstly about bathing. So if performing a bed bath, raise the height of the bed to your hip level at least and then lower the bed rail to avoid reaching over. And be sure to reposition the bed rail if you need to step away from the patient just to prevent them from falling out of the bed. Place all needed items close to you to avoid reaching and twisting more than you have to. If standing in one place for a long time, then try and shift your weight from side to side or from one leg to the other just a little bit just to kind of move the weight to relieve pressure in your low back. So when you're performing a transfer, try to hinge at your hips uh, instead of arcing your back forward. Keep the patient or objects you are lifting close to your body as opposed to far away. This prevents torque, increased torque in the low back. Try and use your legs to lift upward with your back straight. Make sure you allow the patient to assist if you're able for all movements, rolling, sitting, pushing, and sit to stand, etc but only if they're able to assist and it is a safe situation. So this resource is a really good document to view. Um, I'll post the link to this in the d video description so that you can click on it. It basically goes through a lot of more details with, with regard to transferring and a uh, gate belt and how to position yourself uh, when you're transferring a patient. So be sure to check that out. It has pictures in it as well. So I want to talk about putting a gait belt on a patient. So a couple considerations and then I'm going to show a video. If they're in a wheelchair, you want to make sure you lock all brakes um, for every transfer that you do just to keep them stationary and keep the wheelchair from rolling out underneath of them. Ask home caregivers what transfer techniques or typical equipment is used in the home just so you're familiar with some kind of small differences they might have while they're, they're caring for the patient in their own home. Hello, we are student physical therapists at Lynchburg College and we will be demonstrating how to apply a safety belt correctly and how to properly use it with transfer and gait. The purpose of using a gait belt is for stability and to prevent falls. Gait belts are used for all transfers, including ones with assisted devices. The width ranges from one and a half to six inches and the length ranges from 48 to 60 inches. First thing to do is make sure the patient is in the correct position to transfer from sit to stand. The therapist will now place the gait belt around the patient at their waistline. This provides a secure point of contact near the patient's center of gravity. The gait belt teeth need to be on the outside for the buckle to connect. She will feed the belt through the teeth and secure the buckle so it is snug in front of the body. Now they are ready to transfer. The therapist uses the gait belt to lift the patient. The gait belt has probably loosened as standing, so the therapist will need to tighten before taking any steps, as well as taking vitals of the patient. The therapist will place one hand under the gait belt in the center of the back. No matter where the therapist is guarding, the hand placement will still be to cusp under. Now taking a few steps, she will walk almost hip to hip with the patient for a more secure feeling and for stability. If the patient has a weaker side, that will be the side the therapist is on. As the patient sits, the therapist will use the belt to guide a controlled sit. To properly remove the gait belt, unbuckle first and remove gently to prevent breaking of the skin.
Okay, so a couple big points on caring for your back is, like we talked about, we're avoiding repetitive movements. Hinge at the hips or bend with your knees. Wear good supportive shoes. And a good general recommendation is to use heat and cold therapy for sore muscles. Uh, and when you're doing that, you can use a heat or ice pack to the affected area for 20 minutes at a time and try not to put it directly on the skin. So a, little, a couple stretches and exercises for your back. So there'll be some pictures and diagrams in here that you can use for reference. So first the stretches. So top to bottom, the first is a prayer stretch. So this is kind of kneeling, pushing your chest towards the floor and reaching over your head at the same time. The next one is lower trunk rotation. So lying on your back, keeping your feet together with your knees bent and then rotating your knees, letting them fall to either side. The next one is single knee to chest. So with a hand behind one knee, pull the knee towards the chest until a comfortable stretch is felt in the lower back. And then you can repeat on the other side. The next one is double knee to chest, which is the same as what I just mentioned, except pulling both knees at the same time towards the chest. The bottom one is a pelvic tilt, where you lay on your back with your knees bent, and your low back should have an arc in it. Basically, you're trying to tighten up your stomach muscles and flatten out your low back into the floor. So next, a couple core strengthening exercises for stability of the low back. So some of these are pretty basic, but top left is a standing hamstring stretch. The one underneath of that is quadruped arm leg raise. So all fours and then an alternating arm and leg will be extended out at a time and then you would switch. Below that is a gluteal stretch. So same position as some of the stretches on your back with your knees bent, but then crossing one foot over the opposite knee and pulling your legs up to stretch the glute. The right hand side shows some mobility exercises for the low back and the core. One of them is the pelvic tilt, which we just talked about on the stretching side. Cat camel at the top is basically on all fours and you're basically arching your back up and then downward. Curl ups, which is like a sit up except for only your shoulders are coming off the floor. An extension exercise is essentially laying face down and then only using your elbows or your hands to kind of lift your shoulders up into an arced position. And then a side plank, which is on one arm and your lower lower extremities on your side, and then using the hip and the core to lift your hips up off of the floor. Most importantly is if you actually feel like you are injured or have are experiencing serious pain, make sure that you seek professional advice or see a physical therapist with any of these exercises or stretches. So a little bit about preventing patient falls. Have the patient wear non-slip footwear. If there's a gate belt in the home or in the room, please make sure to use it. Another one is to turn lights on if the lighting is low or if they have a night light request that they use it or plug it in for them. The next one is ensure there are clear paths and free of clutter. This means magazines, newspapers, shoes, boxes, pillows that can be on the floor, clothes, all these things the patient can trip over. If when you, they do stand up, a good point is to ask them if they feel dizzy. If they do feel dizzy, then they may need to sit back down until the dizziness passes. Okay, part two is with regard to bathroom equipment and transfers. So in the bathroom, patients may have grab bars. Grab bars have to be securely mounted to studs in the wall if they're drilled in. Do not let patients pull on towel bars or anything like that that's not securely fastened. Suction cup grab bars always have to be tested prior to use. If they come loose while you pull on them, please rem remove and reapply. You can use some dampness from a couple of drops of water on the suction cup and reapply onto the wall and make sure it's secure before they use it. So we're going to talk about a little bit of a, a tub and a bench seat transfer 
in the bathroom into the shower. The bench seat sticks out over the side of the tub and the seat should always be level and not at an angle. The seat is to be used for patients with limited mobility and to prevent having to step in and out of the shower or the tub. We do recommend using a small hand towel on the seat to allow easier transfer. The next step is that we also recommend getting on the seat with the clothes on first. Just pull the pants or underwear down prior to sitting on the seat and then remove pants, pull-ups or underwear and socks and shoes while seated on the edge of the seat. This is a little bit safer. Then you can assist the patient to swing the legs over, over the tub and scoot over onto the seat inside of the shower or tub shower. Start running water to correct temperature. Then you can remove the shirt, upper body clothing, and store away somewhere safe where it's not going to get wet. And then turn the switch to change water from faucet to handheld shower head. Next thing to keep in mind is to remember to keep O2 on when using oxygen. Just remove when washing their face and then reapply. Turn the exhaust fan on in the bathroom and prop the door slightly open if no exhaust fan to allow steam to escape. After the shower and, and drying off, dry them off staying on the seat. Allow the patient to wrap a robe or else get dressed prior to transferring off the seat. A naked body is slick when wet. Thus, dress or robe to wrap up prior to transferring off the seat. Then you can swing the legs over. Make sure the legs are squarely turned perpendicular on the seat so they're not, they're not diagonal on the seat prior to standing up. Do not let patients hold onto the back of the transfer bench as it could tilt the seat one way or another. If a patient uses a shower seat only without the bench that sticks out, make sure the patient steps over the edge of the tower of the tub or shower first. If no grab bar is available, let the patient use the side of the wall to hold onto. And again, do not allow the patient to hold onto the back of the seat since this could, this could tilt or flip the seat. Next, we're going to watch a small demonstration of the bench seat transfer. This is the top transfer bench, Joanna. Next is a small video with a demonstration of just the shower seat transfer. This is the shower seat, Joanna. So a couple other pieces that might be important in the bathtub or the shower. A rubber mat inside the tub or shower. Non-skid strips inside of the shower or else the use of non-skid rubber mats is always recommended inside of the tub to decrease how slippery their, their foot placement can be. A non-skid mat on the outside of the shower tub. Throw rugs could pose a fall risk. However, non-skid mat on the outside of the tub is recommended after the shower to help absorb any possible water spills and reduce the risk of slipping when when transferring out of the shower tub. Handheld shower head. This is especially useful to reach all areas easily without needing to stand up, turn around, and so forth. Shower curtain. Inside sh curtain liner can be used to tuck underneath the patient's leg or thigh to keep water from splashing out. Some toilet equipment. The bedside commode is often used inside of the tub shower as a seat or over the top of the toilet with the, bu with the bucket removed. Otherwise, you might see a raised toilet seat with or without rails that are used over the commode. Be sure this fits securely on 
com the commode and does not shift or move when the patient sits down or stands up. Bedside commodes as well as a seat, seat over toilet can tilt if used incorrectly. Be sure the patient has both hands on the rails of the seat when pushing up or sitting down. Walker canes and wheelchairs. Be sure to use a cane or a walker or wheelchair to get the patient safely into the bathroom. Make sure you check the care plan for specific instructions if the PT or OT or any other healthcare personnel has, has made any notes in there if you're not sure. Be mindful that the patient might be weaker after the shower or bath and might need the wheelchair close by or rest on a seat commode to regain strength. Make sure patients have a, that have a back brace, a neck brace, or an AFO, or a sling, etc. Get that back on after the shower or dressing. Please contact your PT or OT for specific, specific instructions on braces and, and so forth. Some adaptive equipment for dressing. The patient may have a hip kit which is a reacher, a stockade, or a long handle sponge, or a shoehorn, or part of it for dressing and bathing. In home health specifically, the OT, the OT will instruct the patient on how to use this. Allow the, this will allow the patient to do for themselves what they can and to use equipment if already trained by the OT. Also in home health, the, the real goal is for the family and patient to be able to take a bath and shower make sure the family is available to assist and that they know how much assistance the patient might need when they're doing it. This is just a picture of some of the, the top is one of the sponges, the next one down is kind of a grab tool, and the next one is the shoehorn, and the stockade is at the bottom. Some things you might see uh, patients having in their room or in their home. Another important thing is pressure prevention for skin care. It's recommended to change position every two hours during the day when they're not napping. At night, we recommend the side-lying position be alternated with, with supine or laying on their back to reduce pressure on the sacrum, the low back, and the buttocks. When positioning in the wheelchair, the hips should be scooted back all the way in the chair or the recliner. If the seat is tilted, as most recliners are, the pillow use a pillow to prop behind the back to maintain a more upright position and a 90 degree angle between the hips and the back. Use pillow props under the calves so that you can float the heels up in the bed or when reclined in the recliner. We're gonna watch a, a short video on pressure prevention in the recliner in the seated position. Positioning demonstration. Most recliners do not have a 90 degree back to hip angle. We use a pillow behind the back, pillow under the legs to float the heels. Okay, next we're gonna go through the passive range of motion or caregiver assisted range of motion. So what is the purpose of passive range of motion exercises? Joints that are not mobile, they can tend to become stiff, when they're stiff, they cause pain, and then they lose motion over time the longer they're like this. People can lose mobility in their joints due to arthritis, injuries, pain, weakness, or their physical limitations or paralysis. It doesn't really matter why, but range of motion is necessary to help prevent contractures, pain, proper positioning, pressure relief, and provide comfort for the patient. An important piece to this is before you start any range of motion program, make sure there are not underlying precautions from injuries, prior surgeries, etc. that might make range of motion exercises contraindicated. One example would be a broken bone from a recent surgery. Um, they would not want to be moving that joint at the current time. Have the nurse or therapist clarify the range of motion orders before you begin. So firstly, we're going to go through upper extremity. So shorter flexion, gently support the patient's arm at the elbow and the wrist, position with the thumb pointing up, just as shown in the picture here. Gently move the arm upward towards to the patient's tolerance. 
but do not force the movement, and then gently return to the starting position. Abduction is similar. Gently support the patient's arm at the elbow and the wrist with the thumb pointing upward. Gently and slowly move the arm away from the patient's body and upward, as shown in the picture. Only move to the patient's tolerance, do not force, and then return to where you started. And then elbow flexion extension. Picture shows this here. Support the patient's arm at the elbow, making sure to support the arm fully as to not pull on their shoulder. Gently bend and straighten the elbow to the patient's tolerance. You should go slow with these and then hold for a prolonged stretch. Forearm supination pronation. Gently support the arm and the elbow and wrist and then turn the arm palm up and palm down slowly. Wrist, this is all similar in principle. Just hold the patient's hand and move the wrist back into extension to tolerance. And the next one is the same. It's just move the wrist down into flexion, just as the picture shows. Finger is also very similar. Gently hold the fingers in the hand, but do not force move the fingers into a fist, but do not force the movement. And you can hold all these to tolerance for a few seconds each. Next, we're going to go through lower extremity. So hip abduction adduction is just like the shoulder, except for it's with the leg. So you're going to gently support the patient's leg under the knee and the heel. Gently move the leg out to the side and then back towards the middle, just as the picture shows. These should be done slowly and don't force. And just, again, listen to your patient to their tolerance of how far you can go. Knee flexion extension. Support the leg under the knee and the heel. Gently bend the knee up and down, just as the picture shows, moving slowly and making sure not to force the movement. Ankle dorsiflexion stretch. This is a really good one for people's calves. People that are bedridden, have been sitting for a long time, their calves and heel cords get very tight. Just as the picture shows, gently hold the patient's heel with your forearm resting on the bottom of their foot. And then you can use your forearm to gently push the foot up towards the knee as the picture shows. <laughs> 